On May 28, 2022, thousands of rail fans gather along Reading and Northern's main line between North Reading and Jim Thorpe in order to get their shots of the newly restored Reading T1-2102, which was leading the Iron Horse Rambles excursion train for the first time in 30 plus years. Like many others, a few friends and I chased this train along the line all the way to Jim Thorpe and back, catching various other trains and foamer antics along the way. We will see more of this later in the video, but let it be known the amount of foamers that were chasing this train out now pretty much every crowd I've seen as a rail fan, and that includes the first time 611 came to Strasburg. Get out of the shot! With that being said, enjoy my take on chasing Reading and Northern 2102's return to excursion service. Our first location is Leesport, Pennsylvania, an area just outside of Reading Outer Station with multiple crossings in succession. Unsurprisingly, this place was crowded, but we were able to set up on the opposite side of the road, just across from a man dual-wielding DSLRs. What a legend. After a couple minutes of waiting, 2102's headlight appeared in the distance. Here we go. So that was really cool. Definitely top 611 for sure. On to the next spot. Or at least we tried to. So there ended up being a large traffic jam on the road to leave Leesport, caused by, you guessed it, foamers. I didn't record it at the time, but don't worry, this will happen again. As a result, we unfortunately missed 2102 at our planned location in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. However, on our way out, we did get a glimpse of the protect power falling behind the excursion, with SD40-2's number 3059 and 3052, which we'll see more of later. Hey, is that 3058? Uh, wait, can I see it through the trees? Let's see. Yes. Oh. <laughs> On our way to our next spot, we got stuck in foamer induced traffic yet again, allowing 2102 to catch up to us. However, this wasn't completely a bad thing because we got to hear some stack talk and whistle action from the road. <laughs> to catch up to the train around Port Clinton, where we could sort of pace alongside the train, which was mostly blocked by buildings. Lastly, we passed by the area around Miller's Crossing, where the side of the road was literally an endless line of rail fans and their vehicles, which was quite the amazing sight. It's now pouring rain, and we are two miles from the spot. Uh, yeah. So, let's see how this works out. We arrive at New Ringold, where we make a quick pit stop at the local market adjacent to the tracks. Because of this, I wasn't perfectly ready for my shot, but nevertheless, I think it came out pretty good.
Once again, we were in a former traffic jam, conveniently right next to the track at Zenner's. 2102 had went through already, but the protect power ended up catching up to us, which was a nice bonus. I'm gonna keep recording until they go. SD40 passed by, but we're still stuck in traffic. It doesn't focus. There we go. And then they got this one guy who won't pay, pay attention. attention! Speeder! Yes! Better than 2102! Pay attention! After about 40 minutes of driving, we got to our next spot, Jim Thorpe. At this point, we didn't know how far the train was, so we parked around Nesquehoning Junction and decided to walk down the bike path until it came to us, allowing us to get our walk in and get some scenic views. gonna come over this way, so that's where we're gonna try to get it. There's a giant ass puddle here. Let's <laughs> get around here. Ugh, I walked in it. Oh god. Ugh. We passed by riding in Northern's Jim Thorpe Yard, where ex Norfolk Southern F9's 270 and 275 were coupled to a string of passenger cars. After we exited the bike path, 2102 would finally catch up to us, putting on a spectacular entrance into Jim Thorpe using both of its whistles. <laughs> After that awesome entrance, the protect power catches up to the train. These engines would couple up to the back of the train and lead the entire set down to the Y at Nesquehoning Junction. Once the train is turned around, they will head back to Jim Thorpe to prepare for the 3.45 p.m. departure.
Raven makes a quick stop to wait for the Lehigh Gorge train to pass by, making for a perfect rolling meet between the two trains. After that, we once again walk down the bike path, letting the train come to us. We catch them about a half mile down from the junction, passing us at a slow pace. We had to wait about 3 hours for anything else to happen with 2102, so we decided to head back to the car and drive down to CP Coal to catch the Lehigh Gorge train a couple times while we braked for lunch. Here we see it throttling up the grade.
Gord's train passed us, we headed back to Jim Thorpe, allowing us to get ahead of the train. While we were getting gas, 2102 and the MP15 switcher were moved towards the station area. 2102 is mobbed with people, but we found out that we were allowed to get photos standing on the engine, which of course we took the opportunity to do. When it was time for the 3 p.m. gorge train to leave, 2102 blew off the cylinders and rang the bell, a creative and effective way to clear people from the tracks. Clear in the area. When the gorge train departed, tons of foamers crowded on the guardrails at the last second to get their shots. Thankfully, we got there before everyone else did, but that barely stopped the crowd of people from getting in our shots. After that, 2102 reversed back to the concept. This shot shows the sheer amount of people that were at Jim Thorpe, probably in the thousands. That's a crowd. That's a crowd and a half right there. After that crowded shot, we decided to avoid the people and set up closer to the yard. We had heard that 2102 was going to do a run by, however when it did, it only went past the station. We didn't completely miss out on the action though, as MP15 DC 1542 with a water tank car throttled up and headed back to the yard at the same time, giving us a double shave and a haircut horn show. Water in it? I don't know. The diesel action doesn't stop there, as to our surprise, the F9 units were fired up. Apparently, they were preparing an office train ahead to Pittston the next day. 
While they were waiting for clearance, they blew the K5LA horn a couple times, making for some good echo on the mountain. After hearing them blow the horn for about 10 minutes, we made the decision to catch 2102's departure next to the F units. Around 3.50 p.m., 2102 would depart the station, making a grand departure, using the hooter whistle and putting out some awesome stack talk as it throttles up the mountain and passes the F9s. After 2102's grand departure, the F9s depart the yard alongside the Protect Tower. The F9s then reverse down to the station. We decided to head right down to New Ringold ahead of the train. We ended up being the first people there besides the locals, but after 20 minutes the Fomer parade began, 
causing traffic disturbances and filling up parking lots nearby. Nice. Very epic. And he absolutely uh, drifts it into the uh, uh, New Ringgold Market parking lot. Just look at all of them. <laughs> They're probably not all buffs, but still. Oh, <laughs> this is crazy. Ten minutes later, 2102 appeared in the distance. After 2102 passed, we left for our final location, but not before seeing this rail fan's interestingly damaged car. We once again passed the area of Miller's Crossing, where traffic was piled up. Take a guess why. I think there was even more rail fans here this time around. Deja vu! I've no. just been in this place before! It's so wide and things I've ever seen in my entire life! Hang on, let's not smash him. It's this guy again. Oh, oh no, no, it's this guy again! Oh shit! <laughs> Our last location is Hamburg, Pennsylvania, our redemption shot. We were able to get there first and have some nice conversations about the day's events with some fellow rail fans. Even though the sun was on the wrong side, the shot ended up being quite good. Lastly, the Protect set follows close behind 2102, ending off our chase of the Iron Horse Rambles excursion train. At the end of the day, we stopped by the nearby Reading Railroad Heritage Museum, which I will have to revisit one day. After some sheets food for dinner, we headed off on our two hour journey home. I will definitely have to come back to check out Reading and Northern's freight operations, but for now, this brings us to the end of probably one of the best rail fanning experiences I've had thus far. This is Rex the Rail Fanner, signing out. <laughs>